What's up, everybody? We're going to be going into this issue a lot more in depth with a with a future <laughs> live stream. We'll we'll probably be putting that on tonight. Um, we're going to have a special guest on the show Friday that uh, you definitely want to check out for that. Um, going to be the first of many special guests over the summer here. We're going to be going into interview season, which should be all the time, but when you get media credentials, press credentials, you have to get the, some of these. Uh, when you're trying, trying to talk to players, coaches, you, you have to get these things uh, approved and all of that stuff by Brian Kelly, so it, it, it takes a little bit, a little bit of a process. But um, as we get to that, uh, the heels of that interview season, you're going to definitely want to check out the first special guest we're going to have because it's... Uh, it's it's going to be interesting for you. I'll just say that. Um, I really want to talk about Jacques Doucet um, with his interview of uh, Brian Kelly. Great job by, by our man Jacques Doucet. Awesome dude. Always there, always so hospitable uh, to us anytime we're there in Louisiana. Every time we're there, he, he, he's always there covering LSU at every event and just an absolute beast. One of the first people to encourage LSU Odyssey, by the way, um, to you know, really, it, it seemed like it, it was uh, him doing interviews that we started doing like a few years later, trying to do stuff like that, and then us with our articles, and that was the only two people during the pandemic. It seemed like uh, for LSU fans, uh, it seemed like we were the only two ones going with 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 consistent content. It was a very interesting time um, with that, and Jock. Always, always a badass, and once again, does another amazing piece here with Brian Kelly, where he uh, interviews Brian Kelly about the defensive tackle. You know, not just the defensive tackle stuff. Go check out the full thing on YouTube. I don't think it's too revelatory. There, there's too many bombshells, but it's still a very interesting interview, interesting watch uh, to see where the program is at. Brian Kelly looks exhausted and annoyed. Uh, by this whole defensive tackle thing. And I think that is why he he used the wrong verbiage there when he said, we will not pay players. We're not. If you want to come to LSU for development, to come to a championship program, to, to, to get developed for the NFL, you know, and, and NIL opportunities, then LSU is the place for you. If you want to just get paid, LSU is not a good place for you. You know, like he made that very clear. And he seemed just annoyed by the whole situation. You miss out on this guy. You miss out on this guy. You miss out on this guy. Undercut by, you know, nonstop demands, nonstop demands, nonstop more, 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 more. Now, 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 now. Me, 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 me. And I understand Brian Kelly's a man who just made a hundred million dollars on his contract. That's that's the sporting world we live in. So I mean, like, you can't really blame Brian Kelly for being paid his worth. But it is interesting to hear Brian Kelly also say like you know we're not going to overpay for these guys when he's making that much it is, it is it is interesting but i mean his point is really basically he should have said we're not going to overpay for players because let, let's be honest here whether Brian Kelly's trying to make this a poli- you know politicking for the fans like we are not going to participate in this NIL landscape thing we will not pounding on the desk like we will not go into this future uncertain, crazy realm of, of hyper money, free agency, and college football type thing. Um, he's, you know, it wasn't really like that. I know a lot of fans are interpreting that because of what he said. That is exactly what he said. He said, we will not pay for players. Well, that's just not true. Simply put, that's just not true. LSU are paying for players right now, but it's for retention. Like he said... He did also say this, where we want to keep for retaining players on the roster, we use NIL, and they had to use a lot of it, use a lot of the NIL for for retaining players this last year, and and for the 2025 class and recruiting as well. And so the money is spread out, and LSU does have the money, but once you become this school that just pays to play everywhere – what's the main motivation? If your only motivation is money, like, 
everything will be this empty, soulless, like, it doesn't matter how successful you are, you it will never last. It will only be for a season if it's all about greed, all about pure selfish desires you know but that's the I, I understand that it's like so what these guys should just come in for free and get their ACL torn when they're a five star and miss out on a huge payday they could have got at another school and if they don't go to LSU then they're a chicken shit you know I, I think that's bullshit too because you and I wouldn't wouldn't turn away that money so it's it's hard for us to really criticize these kids who do accept the money in this crazy wild west age where this isn't always going to last might as well take advantage of the possibility to be able to make this much type of money off of you off of yourself in college and they are but lsu i think it's smart the lsu aren't willing to go down that that rabbit hole but i think brian kelly should have sharpened up with the messaging there so that he could have been completely understood and not you know, whether it's people are spinning it, whether he's being misunderstood, whether he used the wrong words, however you look at it, his message was obviously not quite fully understood, was it? It was, it was able to be spun, LSU aren't going to be paying players. So now it has going, it is now just given negative recruiters a lot of more ammunition to go against LSU. Yeah, you're not going to get paid at LSU. They're not going to pay you. They don't, they don't value you. They don't care about you. They barely even give their guys a charger. Jaden Daniels had to, you know, do this and this and this and this and this and this and this, take him to an SEC championship game and this and this and this and this. And then halfway through 2023, they finally started paying him. You know, like, you know, they didn't pay Harold Perkins until – Midway through his sophomore year, you know, they could just say whatever, whether it's true or not. Will Campbell's a top five pick. They don't even pay him more than ten grand a year. You know, like that's that's just the number I pulled out of my ass, by the way. But um, I, I am not like that number. I I am not reporting that number or anything. Like I I really do not know how much they pay Will Campbell. Like I'm not. That's just a joke. Don't un- must misunderstand that. I just think the messaging could have been sharper from Kelly, and I think it's now made a lot of, you know, news fodder. And Kelly's just right, just going right into the media tur- turbine, and I think it was unnecessary. He really didn't have to do this interview with Jacques. I think it's a great job by Jacques, but I think for Kelly, there's no, there was no benefit or advantage for him to do this interview at this time, talking about that. I mean... Maybe he wants to send that message. Maybe that's the reason they did it. We want to send this message loud and clear. That this is what we're about. We're not going to waste any more time with kids who, who aren't going to fit that criteria. Maybe that's, the, maybe that's the mode of thinking. I just... I just don't understand what Kelly gets gained from doing, from, from doing that interview. Um, just just my opinion uh, but at the same time I think you have to agree with head coach Brian Kelly here all in all um, no matter how many shiny new toys you want on the defensive line or offensive line or running backs or receivers or you know corners LSU becoming a huge pay for play school just doesn't really fit does it it just doesn't really make sense for LSU to become that type of juggernaut pay for play type of thing where you also you always see a lot of huge um expectations and a lot of high you know high profiles for teams like that 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 throw that money around they get a lot of coverage they get a lot of play in the media but it's not always good coverage though because a a lot of what goes down when you look at say a and m 2022 number one uh, overall class because they paid for that class basically with NIL Um, that went sideways quick didn't it half that team is gone three fourths of that team is gone now what 80% of it's gone now it's ridiculous head coach was gone a year ago (laughs) like insanity It's it's a big lesson for how that can go sideways 
that would never happen under Brian Kelly. I don't think it could ever go that sideways. You know, it couldn't even go half that sideways at LSU with, under Brian Kelly. But um, I, I think this is an age where coaches are very worried about losing that control for good. Let's be real here. The players are getting so much power in the sport now. It's starting to frighten the powers that be to the point where you're going to see some legislation on this and you're going to see some legislation on it quicker than you expected. Because, simply put, the athletic directors, the mega-rich head coaches, the big, big, big mega-donors, boosters, they're scared. They don't want to be paying $5 million for a fourth-string defensive tackle in three years from now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed when a guy like Demonic Williams, who's, what, had eight tackles the year before, is going to fetch, you know, $1.5 million from LSU was the reported offer that he, he was wanting. Like, are you kidding me? It's, uh, these kids smelt the, the opportunity. They saw the market, and they were like, we're going we're gonna to take advantage of this. And they... <laughs> credit those kids but maybe they didn't make the best long term decisions for themselves even though they got paid which you know kudos to them you better make that money last though in this economy and um, you better really uh, buckle down and, and plan on doing something on the field so that you can continue to make that money because that money goes fast I don't care, you know, you bought that car, you bought the mom of this, you bought this and that. Like, it goes quick. Um, So, it's a very interesting thing. You you want to, you see control being kind of like a pendulum swinging back and forth from from players gaining all this power in 2021 when when NIL first got empowered and then the wild, wild west began and the pay-for-play began, all the madness began, like, publicly. It always went by, on behind the scenes, but now it was just unabashed, like, sh- shameless, <laughs> you know, and uh, promotional, savvy. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff that was happening in the NIL world. Um, now it's gotten to this point where everyone wants to be paid. Everyone wants their piece. Everyone wants their cut. And... Um, I think it's very astute for Brian Kelly to see the bigger picture here. But at the same time, clean up the messaging so people don't misunderstand you and then twist your words and negatively recruit you on it that you won't pay players. Because that's just not true. LSU pays players. LSU pays their players. So, you know, all in all, I don't think Kelly needed to do this interview. I think it... I think it didn't have, like, he had nothing to gain from doing this interview. Everything to, to kind of lose. Not everything, but you know what I mean? Like, in this situation. From the narrative standpoint that it was trying to be paint, painted there by, by LSU. That, you know, this is what we're about. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, Hey, if you're not going to compete, you know, if you're not going to throw down the same money as these other schools, and you're not going to do, you're going to keep, hey, I understand that. LSU's different. We've always been different. That's what makes us better than these other schools, right? That's what makes us the best. That's what makes us, you look at Alabama as the, the gold standard, right? Well, they're starting to lose that dynasty with Saban gone and all that, but who was, the, who was only second to them in the 21st century winning titles? LSU, three under three different coaches, four trips to the title game, two Heisman winning quarterbacks, three number one overall pick quarterbacks. <laughs> List goes on and on and on of, of you know top ten picks, offense and defense. It's ridiculous. So uh, LSU has always been different, and. I don't expect us to do what Georgia does or Oklahoma does or what Clemson does or what uh, you know, all these other schools do. And we should celebrate that. We should be proud of that. At the same time, 
let's admit it. LSU pays players. We throw the money around. We don't do it enough. We've been cheap. We've been very careful. We've been way too conservative with it. Maybe it's hurt us. Maybe it will hurt us on the field big time. It's a, it's another gamble by Kelly. But what does LSU lose in the long term? Shelling out three million for Barrow and and Demonic Williams combined. What does LSU lose throwing out four million for this guy, one and a half million for that guy, two million for this guy? Where does LSU go from there? Is that what defines LSU's strategy? Is that the new LSU? Where the yellow goes, the, go, the, the gold goes to green. We'll be talking a lot more about this and ruminating a lot more about this very, very soon. Check out LSUHonestly.com because we're going to have a few more articles. We are waiting for some breaking news that is coming at any moment. We've been waiting for this thing for, for a week now. Got everything ready, so stay buckled up for that. Um, Take it easy, everybody.